Today, we are going to talk about the commonly used method of immunohistochemistry, abbreviated IHC for short. Immuno stands for antibodies, which are used in this method. Histo stands for tissue, and chemistry stands for the binding that occurs between the two. Let's explore how it works. The first step is preparatory. The tissue has to be collected, placed on a microtome that functions as a knife to cut the tissues into three to five micrometer sections. And then a section is placed on a slide. Let's zoom in. The tissue section is made of cells. On a cell are different shaped receptors called antigens. These antigens bind to Y-shaped things called antibodies. Antibodies are made by injecting protein from the tissue sample into an animal such as a cat, a rabbit, or a goat. Because the protein is foreign and bad, their immune response kicks in and creates antibodies. The antibodies that attach first are called primary antibodies. Once the primary antibodies are bound to the cell, secondary antibodies are introduced and those bind to the primary antibody. The secondary antibodies are typically bound to a fluorescent tag. This fluorescent tag is made of a molecule called a fluorophore. The specimen is illuminated with a light of a specific wavelength, or wavelengths, which is absorbed by the fluorophores causing them to emit light of longer wavelengths. Scientists can then visualize the light being emitted by the fluorophores and can take cool, colorful photos like this. Genius, huh? Well, it certainly took a genius to come up with immunohistochemistry. The idea behind immunohistochemistry was formed by Dr. Albert Kuhns in 1939 at Harvard University. Previous to this innovation, researchers used a dye coupled to an antibody, but this only slightly colored the antibody and was rather ineffective when trying to find the antibody under a microscope. While on a vacation in Berlin, Germany, Dr. Kuhns was thinking of ways to locate and identify the antibodies. And he came up with the idea to use a fluorescent molecule instead of a dye, which allowed the targeted proteins to be seen easier under a microscope because they were now brightly fluorescent. This discovery flourished and was quickly utilized by other top researchers to identify antibodies. It also led to the launch of immunohistochemistry as a diagnostic tool in many research laboratories around the world. So the science is cool, but why does this actually matter? There are many uses for this important tool, such as locating and diagnosing cancers, neurodegenerative disorders, and infectious diseases. This technology is also used in research, allowing for advances in pharmacology, gene research, and disease diagnosis. Commercial laboratories use immunohistochemistry to diagnose cancer in about 38% of cases, and private hospital-based community laboratories use immunohistochemistry to diagnose cancer about 24% of the time. Thanks to Dr. Kuhns for creating a technique that has completely revolutionized medicine and science across the globe.